Uh, we will discuss the last theory of failure which is the maximum distortion energy theory or it is otherwise called as von Mises and Henke's theory of failure. It is a very famous theory of failure uh, which is being uh, widely used in many many applications. So, uh, this is also something related with the strain energy, but let us uh, see uh, what exactly this theory suggests. Even though it is saying something regarding the strain energy, uh, what they specifically points to the distortion happening to the material. Distortion means change in shape, how the energy creates a change in shape. And definitely we are going to compare it with the distortion energy happening at the yield point. So, we will calculate the distortion energy on the application of the external loads and we compare it with the uh, energy at the yield point that is being stated uh, using this uh, paragraph or stated in the paragraph. Now, let us have a, a brief discussion about the derivation part of this uh, von Mises and Henke's theory of failure. I think this, this part we have already explained in the previous strain energy theory where uh, we have calculated the strain energy happening or developed in a material by the application of external loads. So, we have calculated the principal of sigma 1, sigma 2, 1, sigma 3 and by all these substitutions uh, we got this particular equation. I think this we have already discussed in the previous theory of failure. So, this is the strain energy that is being developed within a material. Now, here I want to explain something regarding the uh, stress tensor. See, we we have a stress tensor for a state of stress which is represented as sigma x tau x y tau x z tau x z sigma y tau y z tau x z tau y z and sigma z. So, this is a general state 3D state of stress where we have uh, normal stresses in the x direction, y direction, z direction and we have shear stresses in all the planes. Now, this particular state of stress can be uh, split into two parts. One is called as the hydrostatic part which is defined as sigma h 0 0, 0 sigma h 0, 0 0 sigma h. This is called as the hydrostatic part. I will write it as hydrostatic part. And we have also the deviatoric part which is written as sigma x minus sigma h tau x y tau x z tau x y sigma y minus sigma h tau y z tau x z tau y z and finally, sigma z minus sigma h. This is called as the deviatoric part. Right. Now, what exactly is the sigma h? Sigma h is defined as sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z by 3 or if we talk in terms of principles as we can rewrite it as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3. That means, if you look the hydrostatic state of stress, we can see that all the shear components are 0 which means it experiences equal amount of stresses in mutually perpendicular direction. That is, that is why we have given the name itself as hydrostatic that means equal pressure from all the sides right. So, hydrostatic stress is defined as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 this is how we have defined the hydrostatic stress right. Now, if we consider that this hydrostatic stress is being acted on a material then we can say that all these stress value sigma 1 now changes to sigma h, sigma 2 now changes to sigma h, sigma 3 changes to sigma h, all these values contribute to sigma h. So, this equation 1 is going to give the value as u equal to 3 by 2 into 1 minus 2 mu by e into sigma h square. You kindly substitute sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 as sigma h and when you group all these things 
this is the equation that you are going to get okay now comes the interesting part how can we we are going to substitute this particular value here so it is going to look like mu is equal u is equal to the strain energy is equal to 3 by 2 into 1 minus 2 mu by e into sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 the all square which is going to give you the value of u as 1 minus 2 mu by 6 e into sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 the all square this is what you are going to end up with right now we have to do some more arrangements so if you if you expand this what is going to happen u is going to be like uh, 1 minus 2 mu divided by 6 e into sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square plus sigma 3 square minus 2 mu into sigma 1 sigma 2 minus sigma sigma 2 sigma 3 plus sigma 3 sigma 1 this is how you are going to get it right now what we are going to be call this as equation number 2 and now we are going to define the distortion energy do not worry about this curve I will explain that now we have to define the distortion energy distortion energy u d is defined as u minus u h or this is u h hydrostatic strain energy so u minus u h that means it is nothing but 1 minus equation number 2 we have already uh, we, right now we have derived the equation number 2 and we have already defined the equation number 1 so 1 minus 2 is going to give you the value of distortion energy and that value is going to be 1 minus sorry that is going to be 1 plus mu divided by 3e into sigma 1 minus sigma 2 the whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 the whole square plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 the whole square by so kindly sub subtract 1 and 2 try to group and finally the term that we have obtained after the subtraction can be rearranged or can be obtained using a simple format like this right so this is in this particular equation this particular part is called as the the distortion energy sorry uh, the stress at the distortion energy or the stress that contribute the distortion energy say this is called as the sigma v square so we can rewrite this equation as 1 plus mu divided by 3 e into sigma v square this is called as the distortion energy right now we have to compare this with the what now we have to compare this with the distortion energy at the yield so what is the distortion energy at the yield this is going to be 1 plus mu by 3 e into sigma y square right so when this particular value say this equation number a and this equation number b so what is the condition of failure failure condition means failure means a greater than b safe condition means a less than b equation a greater than b and equation a less than b is the safe condition and the failure condition right now when 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 we compare let us take sigma v sigma v is going to be uh, for the two dimensional condition sigma v is going to be what the root of this particular term where sigma 3 is going to be 0 so what we are going to get is sigma v is going to be equal to root of sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus 2 sigma 1 sigma 2 right so if you represent this particular equation the space is going to look like an ellipse which is defined in the eta and zeta coordinates this is the meaning of this particular uh, curve so the distortion energy equation itself is nothing but uh, root of sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus sigma 1 sigma 2 and we are equating this particular term so let us delete all these things 
so what we will do is sigma allowable will be equal to root of sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square minus sigma 1 sigma 2 this is how we are going to solve the problem by using the one measures stress criteria which is very important uh, among all the five theories of failure so while designing a mechanical component we have to use this equation if it is a two-dimensional case and if it is three-dimensional case we will be using this particular part of the equation so that is going to give you because we know that sigma y square is equal to sigma v square and this is how we have to use when it is a three-dimensional case this particular set and the first part will get cancelled out because when we equate these two the one plus mu by three e will get cancelled out and the remaining portion will be there so uh, this theory is of failure this particular theory is very important when we deal with the ductile materials and by this we have completed all the uh, di uh, discuss discussion on all the five theories of failure and for your understanding uh, you have to keep one thing in your mind that see there are other theories of failure also which has been derived from this particular these five sets of theory so these are the important theories of failure that you should know as a mechanical engineer so go back to the discussion on all these things uh, one thing i want to point out is that uh, even though i have given you the derivations of the theories of failure uh, when it comes to the case of a solution or designing you should have the final equation that means this equation with you right and what i have shown you is the uh, how the derivation or how the you know all these theories of failure contribute towards the final equation so uh, make sure that you know the final equations to do solve the problems and you should have a clear cut idea about the different aspects of theories of it. So by this I am concluding and thank you.